This is Public Resource. This is the TBM Today Show with Roger Magulis. Hey, Roger, how you doing? Good. Good morning, Carl. Good morning. Good morning. Um, parallelism. You've got a computer with 48 cores and 200 gigs of RAM, and you're using Python. How do you take advantage of all those cores? Well, Python itself doesn't lend itself to parallelism. It has a threading mechanism, but for kind of deep technical reasons, that doesn't really take full advantage of the parallelism. But luckily, there is a uh, module in Python. There are these modules that extend the functionality of Python. There's one called multiprocessing. And I'm able to use multiprocessing to kick off, in many cases, 48 parallel processes. Now, for the work we're doing in doing text data mining, we're lucky that it's somewhat independent. In other words, the things that are being done are being done on each document. They don't depend on the other documents. So the work actually lends itself to parallelism. So we're able to get, and I've done some testing, pretty much 48 times the performance that we would doing it as a single thread. That's still a linear process. Um, how do you get even faster? Are, are GPUs the answer? I've heard that people use like NVIDIA cards. What, what, what's going on there? So the 48 cores we have are really 48 logical cores based on 12 physical cores of a CPU. So the chip that is in the box we're using has these cores in it. They're very complicated. They do a lot of work. A GPU, a graphic processing unit, is really oriented around math. It doesn't do nearly as much, but it does math fast. Because it doesn't have all that complexity, you can put more on a chip. So we're looking at trying an NVIDIA card that has more than 3,000 GPUs in it. So the parallelism is that much greater. And we think the work we're doing kind of lends itself to the um, way that GPUs process uh, numbers. Even though it's words, the words are really numeric representations. And so we think this will work. Uh, uh, oh. So does, you're using Postgres as your database. Uh, does Postgres know how to talk to GPUs? It, it doesn't. So we're going to use a, a different uh, database called Blazing SQL. Blazing SQL is part of a program called Rapids.ai that NVIDIA helps uh, support to help run chips. The nice thing about Blazing SQL is that it's a library of code. You're not really running a, a, a database server the way Postgres is. You're just running what's in essence a C program. In fact, it's called CUDA, which is the uh, language that NVIDIA uses to talk to all those GPUs. And you can run the SQL, you know, SQL is somewhat standard. You can run standard SQL. It's pretty efficient because it's the way that it's uh, architected and that it's a library and that it doesn't have a server just running in the background. We think that that will be a good fit with the kind of tasks we want to throw at, uh, at the GPU, but it's an experiment, so we'll see. When you search for a plant name, for example, in the corpus, uh, that takes several hours to get through your articles. The theory with the GPUs is this may take several minutes instead. Is, is that the kind of speed that up would, we're hoping for? That would be the, right, that would be the hope um, that that would be the case. And we'll have to do a little bit of architecting, but luckily because it's SQL and because it's embedded with Python, that you can, we'll be able to use pretty much the same code to figure this out and that under the covers, Blazing SQL will handle the parallelism we need. Now, this is different from grid computing, right? Grid computing is lots and lots and lots of computers. It's something that Google uses. The Internet Archive is based on that system. Um, 
would it be harder to do this in a grid computing environment? Would you have to write more special purpose code or can we scale like automatically up into that world? Let's say we want a hundred thousand fold increase in performance. We would have to change the code a bit. We would get into what's called distributed data management. The way that those grid computing or cloud computing works is that you take a slice of the data and put it on machine one and another slice on machine two and so forth, pretty soon you don't have very big slices on each machine and then you kick off all those jobs together. There are things like Hadoop and Spark that help you manage across those um, large arrays of computers. And as you can imagine, the more atomic you make what each one is doing, the faster it can do it and then you just have to bring everything together. The coding is still a, a little different. You have to change it a little more. But there are things coming downstream that are really pretty interesting. And one is called Ray, just R-A-Y. It's coming out of UC Berkeley. And another is called Dask. Both these things do the grid-type parallelism or the cloud-type parallelism underneath Python in ways that are a little more abstract so you don't have to care as much about all the computers there. And that, that's another way to do it. In a way, it's not any different than using a lot of GPUs. It's just you've got these different computers. You have to think a little more, though, about how you're distributing the data because they're on different boxes. OK, well, there you have it. Thank you, Roger. This has been the TDM Today Show with Roger Magoulis. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carl. Great talking to you. Our work at Public Resource is made possible by a generous grant from Arcadia. Arcadia, a charitable fund of Lisbeth Rousing and Peter Baldwin. Additional support provided by contributions from citizens like you. Thank you for your support. Public Resource is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation with headquarters in the state of California and dedicated to the principle that access to knowledge is a human right.